Section 3.1 is about interpreting the components of the routing table. Understanding how to read and interpret the routing table is essential for troubleshooting and ensuring correct data forwarding in IP networks. Here's a breakdown of each component you need to know. Let's start with the routing protocol code. Each route in the routing table begins with a code that identifies how the route was learned. When you run the command show IP route on a Cisco router, you'll see a list of routes in the routing table. Each route begins with a code, a single letter or abbreviation, which indicates how that route was learned and these are the routing protocol code. These codes help network engineers quickly identify whether the route was manually configured, learned via a dynamic routing protocol, or is the default route or directly connected. Here are the common routing protocol codes and what they mean. C means connected, where the network is directly connected to one of the router's interfaces. L means local, which is added when an interface is configured and active. This entry is only displayed in iOS 15 or newer for IPv4 routes and all iOS releases for IPv6 routes. Next is S for static, which is a route manually configured by an administrator. R is for RIP, which is learned via routing information protocol or the distance vector protocol. D is for EIGRP, which is learned via Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol. O means OSPF, which is learned via Open Shortest Path First. B is for BGP, which is learned via Border Gateway Protocol. The asterisk is for Candidate Default, which is a network route that a router identifies as a potential gateway of last resort but doesn't automatically install as the default route. So for example, here's an output of the command show IP route. The network 10.0.0.0/24 shows that this route was learned via OSPF. 192.168.2.0/24 shows that this is a directly connected route. And 0.0.0.0/0 is a statically configured default route indicated by asterisk. Let's now discuss prefix. Prefix is the destination network the route is for. Usually a network address with a subnet mask like 192.168.2.0/24. It tells the router where the traffic is going. Routers use prefixes to match the destination IP address of a packet with the appropriate route in the routing table. If the destination IP address falls within the range defined by the prefix, the router knows which path or next hop to use to forward the packet. In this routing table example, the prefix would be 192.168.2.0/24. This means any packet with a destination from 192.168.10.1 to 192.168.10.254 will match this route. Next is network mask. The network mask determines how big the network is and specifies which part of an IP address represents the network portion and which part represents the host portion. It's written either as a subnet mask or as a CIDR prefix length. The mask helps the router understand which part of the IP address to match when looking for a route. For example, in this routing table, slash 24 tells the router exactly which range of IPs this route covers. Next is the next hop. The next hop is the IP address of the next router that will move the packet closer to its destination. If the destination network isn't directly connected, the router must forward it to another router. For example, in this routing table for the entry for OSPF, the next hop for the 10.0.0.0/24 network is via 192.168.2.2, which means send the packet to router at 192.168.2.2, and it knows where to go next. 
Next is administrative distance or AD. This is used by the router to determine the trustworthiness of a routing protocol when multiple protocols offer routes to the same destination. If multiple routes to the same destination exist from different sources, the router picks the one with the lowest administrative distance. The administrative distance is a local value and helps routers decide which route to install in their routing table. Lower AD values indicate more reliable or preferred routes. For example, in this routing table, the administrative distance can be found as the first value in the brackets. And the static route would be chosen over OSPF. Then, there's the metric. The metric is the cost to reach the destination. Routers use metrics to determine the best path when multiple routes exist to the same destination. Each routing protocol calculates cost differently. Metric is used if two routes have the same AD, then the metric decides which to choose. For example, in this routing table, the metric can be found as the second value in the brackets. Here, both routes are OSPF, but the metric 2 is chosen over metric 5. Next is the gateway of last resort. This is the default route used when no other specific route matches the destination. For example, in this routing table, the gateway of last resort is 192.168.1.1. Meaning, if the router doesn't know where a packet should go, it sends it to 192.168.1.1. And route to 0, .0, 0.0.0.0 is used when no other specific route matches. So, let's put it all together now. In this show IP route output, if destination is 192.168.10.15, it will use the directly connected route and send out to FA00. If destination is 10.2.2.15, it will forward to 192.168.1.2. If destination is 172.16.12.15, it will forward to 10.0.0.3. If the destination IP address is 209.165.200.15 and if nothing matches it, it will send to the gateway of last resort which is 192.168.1.1. The IP address of the next device the packet should be sent to in order to reach the destination network. A value used by routing protocols to choose the best path when multiple routes have the same AD. The routing protocol code D identifies which routing protocol. The network portion of the route written in CIDR notation. It tells you which network the route points to. A number representing the trustworthiness of the route source. The default route used when no specific match for the destination network is found.